short passages. The flow through rooms describes the generosity of light and movement in the way that rooms connect to one another and recommends against the use of passages. Internet scholars, this is your Jesse Styles. Welcome to a very special episode of Twisted Signals. Today we are going to look at some of the resources inside of Max that will help you learn Max. So when you are starting to work in this programming environment as a beginner, one of the best things you can do is go through the tutorials. To get to the tutorials, uh, you will open the reference book. To get to the reference book, we go to the help menu and then reference. Here we are. This is the reference manual. It's our friend. It has all kinds of useful information. If we want to find the tutorials within the reference book, we click on the home button. And from here, we will find a few different ways to get to the tutorials. Here we see Max, MSP, and Jitter, and tutorials, tutorials, tutorials. Great. There's also some great articles you can read here about things like how digital audio works. If we keep scrolling down, uh, again, we've got links to tutorials, tutorials, tutorials for Max, MSP, and Jitter. Max, these are the objects that do the control rate data processing. MSP, this is the audio rate processing, audio rate synthesis, sound related things, and Jitter is for video. Jitter in Max, this is how we work on multi-dimensional arrays of data, and video is just a big array of color values. In Max, we call this a matrix. So jitter objects lets us work on matrices. Let's look at one of these tutorials. Let's look at an MSP tutorial, and here we are. The tutorial for an adjustable oscillator. When we are interacting with these tutorials, we want to click on this button, and this shows us a working code example that we are going to learn by reading this article. So you read through the article, and as you do so, it talks you through how to interact with the different parts of this patch, and when you're done, uh, you'll, you'll have learned something. You'll be an improved person. How nice. Okay, so this is a tutorial where we learn some stuff about audio processing. You can see by looking at it that uh, it's gonna let us change the frequency of something and change the amplitude. But as I'm doing this, I don't hear anything. So let me tell you about a very common beginning mistake that people make when they're learning Max is this question, why doesn't it make sound in Max, for audio processing to work, we have to explicitly turn audio on and off. So let's look at a few different ways to turn audio on and off so that we can hear sound. One is this button, which is always sitting here on the lower right part of our patcher. The audio on off button right above it is a master volume fader. So, uh, I like to pull down the main volume and then turn audio on just in case something really loud is gonna happen and then turn the main volume up. And now we can hear that sound is working and we can interact with different parts of this patch. Super, okay, so that's one way to turn audio on and off is with this button in the lower right. How convenient. Another way is um, using some of these special objects that are clickable. So many objects in our patches, we can click on them with the mouse to interact with them and make them do different things. These are graphical user interface objects, also known as GUI, which uh, is frequently pronounced uh, GUI. So uh, when we say that this is a Oh God, my, my cat is walking on the keyboard and it has activated Siri. Here's what I found. Sorry about that. 
Siri, go to hell. All right. Where were we? <clears throat> oh, well, yeah, we were talking about um, gooey objects. When we say this is a gooey object, we don't mean that it's uh, covered in peanut butter. We mean that it's a GUI object. So down here, this is like a, a gooey DAC. DAC, of course, refers to a digital to analog converter. It takes a digital audio signal uh, from within the world of computers and converts it into an analog signal that you can hear. Uh, so the DAC is our audio output for our patch. So we click on the, this DAC. Also, uh, pro tip, this is frequently pronounced DAC. We can click on this DAC and it turns audio on and it turns it off. We can also send this start message and it does the same thing. So that's a, a second way to turn audio on and off is with these GUI buttons that do that. A third way is to go to this options menu and look at your audio status. This opens up a window which also has an audio on off button. And it has some other useful things. If you wanted to use a different sound card as your input or output device, this is where you could specify that. You could also do things like change your sampling rate and vector size. Okay, so those are three ways to turn audio on and off, which we do all the time, so it's good to know about them. Let's, while we're talking about um, common things we have to do all the time that also lead to some beginner mistakes, let's look at locking and unlocking the patch. So I can click on this number box and change the number value. This is a GUI graphical user interface number box that I can interact with with my mouse. And this works because the patch is locked. If the patch was unlocked and I tried to click on it, now I'm just moving this box around. So we're kind of like in editing mode. Uh, similarly, if I click on this, I'm not turning audio on and off, I'm just moving this object. So unlocking the patch puts us like in editing mode. So now we could, you know, we could select a bunch of these objects by drawing a box over them. We could copy them and put them into a new patch. Um, so that's a useful way to get started with patches is to um, go through the tutorials and if you find some building blocks that are useful, you can copy, paste them into a new patch and start building off of them. So now we can close this, thanks. Um, and let's not save it because this was our tutorial patch. Cool. All right, so now we have this new patch where we have copy pasted some stuff out of the tutorial and we can build upon it. Um, so let's say we want to get back to interacting with this patch. Uh, you try clicking on these number boxes and it doesn't work. If we want to interact with it, we have to now lock the patch again. So this is something we're doing all the time and it can lead to uh, a lot of confusion for beginners. Is like, why can't I click on this and make this button work? You want to make sure your patch is actually locked. So let's look at three ways to lock and unlock our patch. We've talked about clicking on this button in the lower left of the patcher window. That's a great way to do it. Another way to lock and unlock the patch is to hover the mouse somewhere in the background of our patch and command click. And that does the same thing. A third way to do it is to do command E. And that does the same thing. So three ways to lock and unlock a patch. Okay. Let's say we want to learn more about some of the objects that we see inside this patch, like cycle tilde. What are some different ways to use cycle tilde? One good way to learn about different max objects is to look at the help patches. Every object has a help patch and the help patch gives us some working demonstrations of patches that use this object. It shows us some common ways that are, they are used. So to get to the help patch for any object, we're gonna unlock the patch, and then we can right click or control click on that object. And the first thing you'll see is open 
the help. And here's the help patch. Another way to do this is to just option click on this. So our patch is unlocked. We hold the option key and we click on it. It takes us to the same thing. So here is the help patch for cycle tilde. Uh, and we're trying to interact with it to make it make sound, but it doesn't make any sound. Why? Why doesn't it make sound? Because we need to first turn on audio. So you can do that by clicking on this GUI DAC. And now we can change the frequency and change the volume. Help patches frequently have a few different pages we can look at. Um, so this is the first page, but we can look at these other tabs and look at some other ways to interact with this object. Super. If the help patch hasn't satisfied all of our intellectual curiosity about this object, you can go a step further and look at the actual reference page for this object. One way to do that is to look at the final tab in our help patch, which is a question mark, and you can say open reference. This is the reference page for the object. It shows us a description of the object. It has some example snippets that you can copy right here using this copy button. You can make a new patch and paste it. Nice. Thanks for the snippet. Uh, you can continue scrolling down. There's a little discussion of it. And then there's a list of every argument that you could give to this object when you create it. There's a list of every attribute that you could set for this object. And then there's a list of every message you could send to this object that would change its behavior. Finally, uh, you'll see a list of related objects. So if you liked this object, you'll love saw tilde. Saw tilde is another oscillator. So that's one way to get to the reference page. Uh, if the help patch uh, left you with more questions, go look at the reference page. Another way to look at the reference page or to get to the reference page uh, is using these buttons over here. So on the right hand side of our patcher, we've got these three buttons that are super helpful. We use them all the time. Uh, this one opens the Max console, which is great for debugging. If you want to print things, you can the data that you print will show up here in the Max console. Uh, this is the inspector panel. It lets us inspect objects and change their attributes. So if I select this volume fader thing and my look at the inspector, I could like change the color of the, the background color with this. And now it's blue. Beautiful. Uh, the reference. Uh, button will open the reference page uh, and now we'll see it in this right panel here. So again, here we'll see all the same things we would see in the reference manual. You'll see a description of the object down here. You'll see a list of all the messages you could send to this object and all the attributes uh, and some related objects. Okay, let's close this and no, I don't want to save it. Let's talk about the autocompleter. Uh, so one of the challenges of learning any new programming language is just memorizing the hundreds and hundreds of names for all the different parameters, objects, and functions that you could use in some language. Max has hundreds of different objects that do hundreds of different things, and it takes a long time to learn the names for all of them. So if we wanted to look at a different type of oscillator, for example, than what we have in this patch, uh, maybe we don't remember the name for all the different types of oscillators you could use in Max. You can just try using the autocompleter to search for objects that have that term in them. So let's just start typing the word oscillator and you can see the autocompleter is giving us a list of every object that has that word either in its name or in its description somewhere. So 
We, we saw saw tilde already was referred to as another type of oscillator. Uh, here's rect tilde, which gives us a rectangular oscillator. So we could turn on audio in this patch and set the frequency. And great, so we just found a new oscillator by using the autocompleter. How nice. If we wanted to learn more about how this object works, uh, we could, of course, we could look at the help patch for this by option clicking on it. Uh, or we could look at the reference for it by opening the reference manual. We could right click on this object and we can open the help or the reference just by right clicking on it. Uh, and those are some ways we could learn more about it. Also, uh, let's just look at hovering our mouse over these inlets and outlets. If we hover the mouse over them, this is another way to learn what these inlets and outlets accept and provide in terms of input and output signals. So you can see that the left inlet here sets the frequency, the, the middle inlet sets the duty cycle, and this sets the sync input and then this is our signal output. So there you go. Uh, those are some essential tools for learning our way around inside of Max by opening the reference manual, finding the tutorials, by interacting with the tutorial patches, by looking at help patches for the objects that we want to learn more about, by looking at the reference pages for those objects by using the autocompleter to search for objects that have matching terms, and by hovering our mouse over different parts of the patch to look at the clue windows that pop up. Uh, plus, we looked at some shortcuts for locking our patches and turning audio on and off. Sweet, okay, thank you for joining us. I'll see you later.